Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I'm so passionate about which is going to be my five tips for bilingual parents to teach their children two languages. I became a mum uh, over two years ago and I very much decided that I'm going to teach him both English and Russian. So Russian is something that I grew up with, I learnt from my family, I was born in Russia, I moved when I was one. But anyway, if you want to know all of that information, I'll add a link to an old video that I did about that so that you can know more about me and my background rather than going into it this video. So basically I am going to go through my experience that I've had recently, the feedback we've had from nursery and the things that I have seen. So I've tried to get footage as much as I can recently around him speaking both languages or how he goes from one to the other. It's so, so interesting. And basically these are my tips so that I can help you guys on your journey of bilingualism. Hopefully that's the right way to say it. I believe that having two languages has so many benefits from decreasing the chances of having Alzheimer's uh, and dementia or at least slowing that process down to helping multitasking, thinking on, on the go, so you're using two parts of your brain apparently. So I really do feel passionate about this and I hope that these are useful to you. Before I start, as always, do give me a thumbs up. I very much appreciate it. I do all my videos in my spare time. I also work full time. I'm a mum, I'm a dog owner. So I have to look after lots of things um, and I'm spinning lots of plates here and there. So even a like goes a long way. I also do loads of videos on mum stuff so if you're interested in like clean with me's and house makeovers because we've recently moved I'd love to have you on board so do consider subscribing. Great so let's get started and talk about it. First of all I wanted to say the fact that I repeat myself. I wanted to say that I repeat myself. I wanted to say that I repeat myself. <laughs> Basically what I'm trying to say is the fact that I am consistent in what I am telling him. Firstly, we decided that I'm going to be the only person um, in the family to speak the language of Russian, whereas everybody else speaks English. It's less out of choice, so basically we don't really see my family as much, just because they live across the UK. One's in Oxford, the other one's in like Eastbourne, and we are currently living in Essex. But the fact that my other half is English and his family is fully English, so they're all speaking English. Nursery speaks English, Nanny and Grandad speak English, Daddy speaks English, so it just makes sense for me to be the sole provider of that language. And what that means is that I only speak to him in Russian. I try not to communicate with him in English at all if I can help it. But that also means that there's a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. And what I tend to do is continuously say a particular word in Russian. So for example, if daddy is saying ball, I would then repeat it in Russian. So basically I continuously repeat the same words as much as I can so that he associates those with particular things. They say that actually they pick up language so much easier from a very young age. So when we're playing, I make sure that I use the same words for, um, let's say, a game or, or washing. So he knows the word for washing in Russian, which is mwitsa. So he continues to say that. And because I'm most likely to wash him, he now goes to daddy and says mwitsa, as in like, let's go wash, which is interesting. So that's something to keep in mind that if you're more likely to repeat that same word and so that the baby or the toddler associates it with that thing, they're more likely to say that particular word. So actually my toddler prefers English. He mostly speaks in English. He picks it up like that as well recently, touch wood. Um, when it comes to games and nursery rhymes and even preferring some words in English, English seems to be so much easier. So to give you another example, um, something easy like animals, cat, koshka, or dog, sabaka. So there's like three syllables and it seems to be that in Russian there's a lot longer words 
so English is much easier to uh, pick up, I guess, but also because he's speaking English mostly. But from my point of view, what I'm saying is just keep being consistent, repeat yourself. Basically because I'm also learning Russian from my family rather than actually from Russia or like schooling, I also only know like the basic Russian. I wouldn't be able to explain to him like science or maths, probably when he gets a little bit older. So I'll have to speak to him in English or like philosophy, for example. There's some words that I wouldn't be able to know. But whilst he's small and whilst I'm able to, I will repeat the same words that I, I will do. And the reason I mention it is because obviously, as I know basic Russian, I would only know one or two words or like that specific word for that association anyway. So what I understand it to be like, Miaj, that's the only word that it's going to be but in Russian because you've got so many different endings it could be other words as well anyway what I'm saying is just repeat yourself continuously repeat if they're playing ball continuously say oh this is a ball in that language obviously so and every parent has to have their own language if you're taking the method that we're doing and something that nursery actually said they said they're very happy with his um language development at this age um he's picking it up very well he's very chatty actually and then when i mentioned the fact that he's got the russian language at home they were very surprised because they didn't notice him like confusing those two languages at all and they asked me to give them some words in Russian or write it down in their little booklet so that they can do it in nursery but actually I pushed back and I said no I'm not going to do that because he needs to associate a particular language with that area and I don't want to confuse him otherwise he needs to know that actually Russian is just like mummy's language with mummy I'll only speak in Russian in nursery I'll only speak English and the reason why he hasn't been confusing the two languages I believe is for that very reason that we've been very like repetitive around that we've been made sure that I speak Russian only and then everybody else speaks English or the language that obviously is in the UK so I from my opinion I think we've made the right decision but I'd love to know if you guys have done it slightly differently so let me know in the comments below so my next tip would be so this is tip number two is the fact that I narrate what he is doing in my language so if he is coming to me with something I will then say something like oh um is Aiden giving me a bowl in Russian so it's basically giving him the opportunity to understand more words in Russian rather than just like okay give it here so give me the bowl for example I'm narrating the whole situation so that then he is able to understand the bigger picture and more words that he's basically exposed to whilst he is living whilst he is playing whilst he is watching TV or doing things that he very much enjoys. Narration isn't very easy though because it's pretty much like being somebody else's personal translator. I found that I've been very much like around him and somebody would say something in English like daddy would say let's go play football. I'd say the same thing but in Russian so that he knows that those two things mean the same thing but they're two completely different languages and because mummy is saying it that's, that's Russian. If daddy's saying it, it's English. So I very much do walk around him. Yes, it's effort. Yes, it's energy. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. Sometimes I'm mute because I'm tired, because I'm a mum. Look, we're all very much human, but my outlook is the fact that I'm going to try and narrate it as much as I can and give him that opportunity to know the language as much as I can by being his personal translator running around him telling him oh okay so he's doing this you're building blocks or this is a very big tower Aiden has made a huge tower you know that kind of thing so it's just been quite enthusiastic and making sure that he knows what those things are in that language. Tip number three for me has worked so well and that is break it down by syllables. I found that Russian has very many longer words than English. It seems to be a much harder language. Um, speaking from personal experience, I've also known Hebrew in the past. Unfortunately, I forgot it completely. So yeah, I used to know Russian, Hebrew and English at one point. But essentially, 
Russian has very long words, which means that I would prefer to break it down for my son. So if I'm trying to get him to say something, so for example, this morning, I was trying to get him to say musirka, which is bin. So another example around like a really long word, musirka, compared to bin, <laughs> you know, it's so quick. In English, it's just so snappy and so much quicker to pick up. So then therefore I would tell him more, then he'll repeat it, sir, ka. And obviously he can't say the R's yet and things like that and it's not perfect but I'm getting him involved and getting him comfortable and getting his tongue used to the the basically the syllables the noises of the Russian language because actually Russian has more letters than English does so yeah that's definitely another tip that is for me that works really well for me at the moment so tip number four is something that I've not quite mastered yet something that I definitely recommend and definitely will be trying to do more of going forwards as he's speaking to me and that is to reply to him only when he speaks to me in Russian. So he's very much likely to speak to me in English all the time. <laughs> so basically my plan and my job is to make sure to say you need to say it in Russian for me to do that action. So to give you an example, we play, we play, he likes me to pick him up in like the basket that we do and I, he says more, more, come on mummy, more and I'm like okay say you sure which is like more in Russian, you sure? So he says it and then I do it. So that's something that I've started to do and will continue to do and definitely recommend. And the reason for that is because I don't want him to basically speak to me in English all the time and I'll speak to him in Russian because actually I find English easier to speak to as well. I think in English, I feel English. I'd like my son to have the practice and to be able to speak it as much as possible. And the only way he can do that is with practice. And therefore, I would give him practice by making sure that he speaks to me in that language before I reply, before I do the thing that he wants me to do. As I said, it's not something I've mastered yet because I still do it when he's asking me in English. So I think I'll definitely do more of that going forwards and I'll definitely try and make sure like in my mind, right, you have to do this so that he gets the practice that he needs. Tip number five is an interesting one because I found that the more time he spends with me, the more time he has exposure to my language, the more likely he is to speak that language, understand that language and basically use it a lot more. So for about a week, my husband left um, to go abroad for work. So I did some solo parenting. If you wanted to have a look at the video, I'll make sure to link it. Um, but basically, it meant that the whole week, he was just speaking to me in the mornings and night time. So he would have more exposure in that English language. So basically, because he was spending a lot more time with me, we were watching a lot less English TV and things like that he was more likely to speak to me in Russian, come to me, say Russian words and things like that. So something that I would recommend is basically exposing them to that area as much as possible. So for example, if you can take a holiday, a one week, two weeks in that particular country so that they are exposed to that language, if they can spend their time always speaking that particular language, so with, with your family, with your grandparents, then it definitely helps with that language. So those are my five tips for bilingual parenting. Um, and it's been two years and a few months. Uh, basically, I'll try and add some footage that I've collected for you guys so that you can see some of the things that my son does, how he speaks. I'd say he's probably um, a little bit advanced for his age in terms of de development, so touch wood, um, when it comes to like the language, even though he's got two languages. So it definitely shows that it doesn't stunt their growth when it comes to speaking. So yeah, I definitely recommend you having a look at that and yeah, I hope that it's useful. Good luck guys, let me know how it goes in the comments and I'll catch you next time. If I push in, Cook mama jedoi. Mama jedo kushit, huh? Mm -hmm. In the arm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you didn't push it. Oh. Oh. I didn't push it, huh? You did a big one. Mm hmm. Ten. I didn't watch it. 
скажу, моя очередь. Моя очередь. Мало. Очередь. Ты сказал, что мы купим? Купим. Купим чего? Чего мы купим? Эйден, чего мы купим? Мы купим баблс, да? Купим баблс. Купим баблс. Купим баблс. Купим баблс. Ты хочешь это побежать? 